We all know how good generative AI has become when it comes to producing raster images, and the market is flooded with tools mostly relying on popular image models like Flux, Stable Diffusion, or variants of them. But what about generating vector images? Until recently, Adobe Firefly's vector model introduced in late 2023 within Adobe Illustrator was the only notable option. While it allows text-to-vector generation, the results mostly fall short in quality and visual appeal, leaving much to be desired for professional designers. To my surprise, there is actually an alternative online image generation and editing tool called ReCraft that can produce outstanding vector images superior to Adobe Firefly in every way. I got interested to see what it can do when I discovered it on this hugging face text to image leaderboard comparing popular Gen AI models. After using it daily for around two months, I can see why it is voted as number one, rated even higher than Midjourney 6.1 and Flux 1.1. In this video, I will show you why ReCraft is one of the best and most practical generative AI tools for designers and illustrators, and how it stacks up against Adobe Firefly's vector model. Now, even before we start, here is a question for you. Out of these two examples you see on my screen, which one do you think was generated in ReCraft and which one was the one generated within Adobe Illustrator? For both of these, I used exactly the same prompt that you can see on my screen. And of course, both of these are vector images, which I can show easily by switching to outline view. And I can also select everything so you can see the anchor points as well. Just simply at looking the way everything is structured, both of these are fairly similar and they seem like usable vector graphics. And of course, it means that they are completely resolution independent, so I can zoom as close as I want to either of these. So technically or on the surface level, they both look good. However, aesthetically or stylistically, there is a huge difference. And in case you guessed this one coming from ReCraft, you are right. But what's very important to point out right at the beginning, that besides this being visually more appealing, it is also built in a much smarter way, having every detail layered perfectly on top of each other. Let me show you what I mean here first with the Adobe example. So if I use my direct selection tool, I can drag these objects around and you will notice that there is no overlap between them, having their outlines aligned to each other. So there is no layering happening here. I can do this on the helmet as well. And you would expect something like a highlight to still have the original shape underneath it. But most of the time it won't. This makes changing anything in these generated vector illustrations much harder because you don't really have control over the elements and how they are laid on top of each other. But let me switch over to ReCraft and you can see all of these different examples here. But this is the little guy that we've just seen in this comparison. And one of the many things I love about ReCraft is if I select a generated image, I will still have all the settings visible on the left side within the interface. So I know exactly what prompt I used and also importantly, which image model I used to generate it. But there is actually a very quick and easy way to see this layering that I mentioned that is much better in ReCraft compared to Adobe Illustrator. I can actually start adjusting the amount of colors and go all the way down to one. So we can see that's the main shape, the silhouette of the character that's going to be at the bottom. And then this is how ReCraft is building up the additional colors, exactly how an Illustrator would do this building up the vector shapes. So by the end, we get 24 colors and these are all nicely layered on top of each other. Again, if we take a look at this in Illustrator, you can see how I can move the silhouette away and then we get all those additional shapes that were on top of it. Or if I zoom a little bit closer and for instance, take one of these details on the beard away, we still have the main color of the beard underneath. Even if I select this bigger shape, you can see how everything is nicely layered on top of each other. But let me show you within ReCraft how I ended up creating this particular character, the full workflow I recorded here. And this is also an amazing thing about ReCraft that you have an infinite canvas. You can create multiple projects, but essentially you are working in the browser and you can have all the things that you create laid down next to each other, structure it, even add notes for yourself to remember what you created. 
And you can also do live collaboration. So you can just invite people from the share button up here. And then you can decide whether they should be viewers or commenters. And viewer essentially means that they can generate new things on the same board as long as they have credits. But as you can see, first for this mascot, what I did is to use the raster image model V3 raw, it's called, and used this prompt that you can see up here. And that generated these results. They look really nice. Once again, I'm just going to keep the prompt up there so you can see it. And out of all of these, I actually really liked this one. And then I decided that I'm going to refine this further. But it's important to mention that these are still raster images. So if I zoom closer, they actually start to get pixelated. While my other tests that I've done for the same prompt, these are all vector based. So if I was to zoom closer to any of these, even here within the browser, it's going to generate obviously the vector version, which is resolution independent. So although I like some of these as well, that was still my favorite. And then I decided that I want to fine tune it a little bit. So I went in and used the fine tune feature, which you can find up here. Once you select that, you can decide how similar you want the final result to be, which you can make almost identical or a little bit similar. So there's a lot of options in between. And you can also change the model. And there are so many models to choose from. So if I go to explore, these are all the different models. There's so many art styles here. So you can be very specific if you want to generate something. And although I use Recraft mainly for illustration, you can of course also achieve photorealism. But just as an example, if I choose this young adult book style, and then I will probably set it to highly similar and four images. And by the way, if you want to see the newly generated version next to the original one, just hold down Alt or Option key and drag a copy. And then you can say modify image. So this way you are not changing the original one. And this is what we got. It looks quite different. And like the crop is quite different. It's zoomed in. But this is actually really cool. I really like this one. We could always extend this later. A bit of missing part on the X can easily be fixed in Illustrator. But I actually really like this one, probably even more than the other ones that I chose. So yeah, there you go. Uh, fine tuning is an awesome feature and it's really fun to experiment with different styles. But what I've done originally was to use the Recraft V3 raw model and I created a couple of versions and this is when vectorize feature comes into play. So if I duplicate this here quickly, we can just click on this icon here on the top, vectorize. And it's essentially going to work just like Image Trace in Illustrator. And although they improved Image Trace recently, I feel like Recraft is actually doing a much better job at vectorizing images as well. After, and that's before. After, before. And of course, you can also entirely remove the background. Just click on this scissors icon here. That's the remove background. And it should also remove that shadow underneath. There you go. We haven't lost anything important and it looks great. And this is actually also another standout feature of Recraft that I find extremely useful, that you can actually use your own illustrations to create your own style model. You can decide whether to use a single image or up to five images for a model and essentially works similarly to an SREF code or a style reference in Midjourney. So this is the original illustration based on my sketch, my finalized vector artwork that I created in Adobe Illustrator. All of the examples I'm showing here are actually from my Adobe Illustrator Fast Track course. Now you can access the course independently. You don't have to subscribe to all of our other courses. But you can see that these are the illustrations that I generated using this as my reference. And if I bring up the user interface, you can see that I'm also using another feature called image set, which in a way can batch generate multiple prompts at the same time. But the most important thing is that the model that I'm using, if I click on this, is actually this custom model that I created based on that single illustration. As you can see, I have quite a lot of these models already created. It is both scary and exciting at the same time how only a few of my actual illustrations 
can really control the outcome of the generated illustrations. I also just wanted to show you another interesting thing. I always love to play around with using my sketches and see what a generative AI tool can do with them. So in this case, you can see the sketch of this dinosaur, which I then turned into fully vector version in Illustrator. And then simply using that sketch and using Recraft's fine tune feature set to creating something very similar and using the image style that was trained on my illustrations together with this simple prompt, it created this. And you might be wondering, but this is actually quite different from the original sketch. And to be honest, I actually like that because the reason why I would use AI for something like this is just to help me explore lots of different ideas very quickly before I commit to the final vector version. Clearly in these generated examples, there's lots of unnecessary details or details that don't actually make any sense, but they can really help to push my artistic style in one direction or another. So I would just use these as references. I wouldn't fully rely on them. Just exactly how you would normally look for images online and create a little mood board or reference board before you start an illustration project. And if we scroll a little bit further down, I feel like it created an even better result for the Raptor. So I really like this. It looks amazing. And I actually haven't finished this sketch. It was just an idea when I was working on the other dinosaur. I thought I will do a whole series. But yeah, I, I love this one. These are not bad either. And again, it can help me to realize that certain proportions or shapes that I had in my original sketch can be improved. So in a way, you can also use AI to help you analyze your own sketches or illustrations before you continue working on them. I'm not saying that you should rely on AI to teach you how to draw, but in this particular case, it definitely did a better job here on the back of the dinosaur. The proportions are so much better and the curves and the, everything, the way it's created. And even the placement of the head is better, although the head itself I'm not happy with, but yeah, it can help improve my sketches and illustrations before I end up vectorizing them. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on the Recraft examples I've shared so far. Would you consider using it for your creative projects or do you feel it's not quite there yet for a professional designer's workflow? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear your perspective. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We got some exciting new design tutorials coming soon that you won't want to miss. Now here's just another quick example of the workflow that I achieved within Recraft. You can see the original prompt that I used here on the left side. Then I tidied this up by removing the background. You can also use the eraser tool to remove details that you don't want. It's a bit like editing vectors in Illustrator. Here we don't have like full control over every anchor point, but the eraser is actually still good to remove things that you don't need. And then of course you can also adjust the colors. As you can see, I could completely recolor this illustration right here within Recraft by going into the colors option down here. And once I click on that, I can see all the five swatches that are currently used here. And if I want to change any of them, like this orange, I can just select it and change it to whatever I want. Like that one actually looks much better. And another thing that I love in Recraft is that you can easily generate mockups. Like all of these images that you can see here were actually also generated here within Recraft. And you can see I added this illustration on them. And again, similarly to Illustrator's mockup feature, here we can move these details around easily. So for instance, if I want this new version to be used on the t-shirt, I can just take this away or put it on the table if I wanted to. But let's just take it out. And then instead, let's duplicate this and drag it onto our mockup. And that's how easy it is. Let's resize it and rotate it and we have a great mock-up and you can see if I select the image in the background it was just simply created from this prompt gray t-shirt on a rustic table 
And as a final closing thought, I wanted to show you one last example. Here is a vector illustration created by von Glitschka or Glitschka Studios. He's an artist that I really admire and I love his work. I have the link directly here on the board that it has a comment, but I also have the link to this project in the description below if you want to check it out. His work is amazing and I was curious to see if I could use Recraft to do something similar to this, simply using prompts like Lion's Head mascot logo, lion made of USA flag, stars, circular badge, and then I refined this prompt later, but without going into too much detail, these are the generated images. So these were all created here in Recraft. I managed to create some interesting compositions. It's quite impressive, like this one, for instance, I really like, I like the general shape of it. But what I'm trying to say here is that even though you can generate very interesting results with AI, you shouldn't fully rely on it. The more you can be in control and the more you can stick to an original idea that you come up with, the more professional your designs or illustrations will look like. So even though Recraft is amazing, I still don't see generative AI replacing someone who has really dedicated honing their craft to create outstanding illustrations like this one. I hope you found this review of Recraft useful. It is a tool that really stands out being the best for generating vector graphics. Don't miss the chance to try it yourself. So use the promo code YES12 for a $12 discount on any plan. Scan this QR code or click the link in the description to discover how Recraft can revolutionize your design and illustration workflow. Thanks a lot for watching, have fun creating and generating, and I'll see you next time.